Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Bite Size Cinema. I'm your host RJ McCready and for this episode, episode number 4, I'm going to be taking you guys back to the year in 1967 and we're going to be taking a look at the hammer horror thriller suspense movie Quatermass and the Pit. That's right guys, so let's have a look at the trailer. Before that, let's go to the London Underground to see what's going on down there, see if anything sinister is going on. So I'll leave you guys to that and I'll be back and we'll talk about this movie. See you soon. Get back! Who were they running from? What have they seen? Whom do they fear? There are five million answers to these questions, and every one of them is a shocker. No, I saw it. I saw it. Take it down. Oh, Terror, five million years old, spills into our time to make two worlds collide. What is happening here and now can affect the next five million years. It was what I was afraid of. The thing got a huge intake of energy. The very substance of it seemed to be coming alive. And then, and you can't see this world any longer. They feel it. They see it. The archaeologist who digs back into the past to unearth more horror than the human mind can bear. Quatermass, the scientist, who comes face to face with five million years of terror. Rony, it's Barbara. She's the one. Get down here, quick. She can see into the pit and knows the terrifying truth. Oh, me. He can see into the pit, but he will not believe what he sees. They were coming. Who? What were? Them. Them. He saw the creatures. They were alive. Alive? You descend into the pit of hell as you share their horror. Listen, I'm advising you all to leave. There may be grave danger. I tell you, this could be dangerous. Get back! Get back! And welcome back everybody, so let's have a look at the synopsis for this film. So, when workmen tunning for a new subway discover a pit filled with skulls, they do not realise that they have awakened an ancient evil that now threatens humanity. It was produced by Hammer Film Productions Limited, which is also famously known for Hammer Horror. Uh, it is a British film production company and they are best known for gothic horror films made from the 1950s to the 1970s. And many of these um, involve the classic horror characters such as Frankenstein, Count Dracula and the Mummy. And they also introduced um, elements of sci-fi and thrillers to their films and film noir such as uh, Sherlock Holmes, just to name a few, and a couple of comedies along the way. Uh, their most successful years though were where they dominated the horror film market. Um, in between that time, and that's, they had a worldwide um, film distribution and a considerable financial success. And to this day, uh, when we talk about Hammer Horror Film, I suppose the notable one is Count Dracula and characters like that. Um, they also had partnerships with film companies such as Universal Pictures, Columbia Pictures and America International. And they are still running today, so for 85 years they've been running up till present day. And one of their latest films was actually The Woman in Black with uh, Daniel Radcliffe, and that's quite a good movie, so check that out if you haven't seen it. But going back to Quatermass and the Pit, let's talk about this movie. Um, it is actually one of my favourite Hammer horror movies, one of my favourite sci-fi films. Um, 
it's what I like about this film. It's a very slow burn thriller mystery. It's almost like a detective movie where you've got Bernard Quatermass um, investigating what he first believes to be a unexploded bomb in a underground station. But before we find out what that unexploded bomb actually is, let's talk about the cast of this movie. So um, it stars James Donald as Dr. Rooney, and he is known for being in other movies such as The Great Escape and The Bridge on the River Kwai. And he's a very much a sort of English gentleman type character, and he suits the role brilliantly in this movie. Now you've got Andrew Kerr. Who plays Bernard Quatermass and he is in other movies such as Zeppelin and he is known for other Hammer Horror movies um, in Dracula, Prince of Darkness and he plays Father Sandor, I think he's one of the protagonists in that movie. He's also in Doctor Who, uh, The Dark Invasion of Earth where he plays alongside Peter Cushion uh, who is another iconic uh, Hammer Horror movie icon. And the other person to look out for in this movie is Julian Glover and if you're wondering who he is, you've seen him in films such as Star Wars where he plays the the ATAT pilot that takes out the rebel base in uh, The Empire Strikes Back and he's also the antagonist in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, he's the guy that sort of drinks out from the wrong cup at the end. It was directed by Roy Ward Baker. Um, He's also been involved with Hammer Horror films. He directed Dracula 1972 AD, which I watched for the first time the other day. I kind of liked it. I'll get back to that one later. <laughs> it was written by Nigel Neal. He actually wrote all the Quatermass movies, uh, The Quatermass Experiment, Quatermass 2. He also wrote um, a little movie that I know some of you guys might be familiar with listening to this is Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. So the connection with that is that was produced by John Carpenter and Tommy Lee Wallace who's friends with JC. So John Carpenter is a massive Quatermass fan. He's mentioned uh, Quatermass in writing credits and he also made a film called um, The Prince of Darkness uh, 1987 which is a uh, a homage type remake of Quatermass in the Pit so there's a little bit of a bit of movie trivia there, a bit of a connection. Also to mention this film you see an early video recorder uh, later on in the movie as a little bit of trivia and also to mention one of the final things I'll mention and all that is that it's made for just under half a million dollars I mean that's a, I think it's a lot of movie for your money when you look at uh, what you're getting out of this movie with everything but so there you go, there's a little bit of uh, trivia on, on the movie, but let's go back to the underground, let's find out what that unexploded bomb bomb is with the start of this movie. So, with the workers building an extension to the London Underground Station at Hobbs End, dig up skeletal remains, and for some of you who have seen the movie In the Mouth of Madness, you will know Hobbs End as a reference to one of the books in that film called The Hobbs End Horror. So a little bit of trivia there. Uh, but. The, going back, the workers dig up a skeleton remains and paleontologist Dr Matthew, who is James Donald, identifies it as a five million year old ape man and one of Rooney's assistants uncovers a metallic object which they think is an unexploded bomb. So they bring in the uh, bomb disposal team which is Colonel Breen which I said is played by Julian Grover. And they also bring in Bernard Quatermass, um, who is currently involved in the colonisation of the moon to be taken over. So right at the start of this movie, I think you get a really good scene. You're getting a bit of a mystery thriller here. I mean, you've got the almost like a little bit of isolation here where it's in the underground station. You've got the army there thinking they found a bomb. You've got the paleontologists finding an ape man. And then you've got Bernard Quatermass is involved in the space project. project. So you've, you've almost got like a bit of a sort of crime scene for the people trying to work out what's going on. And I think Bernard Quatermass in this film is very, um, he's got a real conviction about him. He's almost like your old scientist uh, school teacher. He's got the tweeded jacket and the beard. 
And the other thing is a little bit of, he, he won't take any nonsense either, even though he's working with the army. The army are trying to tell him uh, one thing and he's sort of saying, well, no, I don't think it is. I don't, because the army think that this metallic object is a V2 rocket. But as it turns out, they end up finding the actual ape men inside the the object. And as it turns out, it <laughs> turns out to be a spacecraft from Mars containing uh, these green alien beings, um, which turn out to be demons that want to take over the world. So as I mentioned earlier, this is a slow burn hammer horror movie. Um, as, as the film progresses, um, there's a scene where one of the bomb disposal team sees an apparition of something horrible within the object and he comes out screaming and this is the start of the hauntings and then Barbara who is Dr Rooney's assistant she works out that Hob, Hobbs End is another word for the devil um, her and Dr Quatermass investigate the local area and she finds out or well, they find out that there's hauntings in the local buildings and then they've, you've got a scene where there's a guy who tries to drill into the object and he ends up going crazy. And then after this failed attempt to try and actually get into it, it actually opens up by itself and they manage to retrieve, uh, I think it's about four insect type creatures, um, all green and gooey. And upon investigation, uh, they do like autopsies. They realise that these creatures actually look like demons from within books and even the devil. So Quatermass is beginning to think that something sinister is going on here with everything that's going on. Then later on he also he speaks to the guy who tried to drill into the object and he is having visions of these insects um, taking over the world. And then you've also got Barbara at this time who becomes uh, almost possessed uh, by the spacecraft and she's also saying that she's having these visions. So you've got a scene here where Quatermass uses this machine to record her thoughts and it shows images of uh, thousands or hordes of these insects on the planet Mars. And as it turns out, so the whole findings of this is that these are um, telekinetic demons from the planet Mars that want to take over Earth and what they've done is they've come to the Earth five million years before and they've helped advance the human race but with the objective to then come back in present day and take over the Earth so this is all the sinister stuff that is going on but before Quatermass can warn everybody and warn the government there is a power line that falls onto the spacecraft this increases the influence to all the other people in London, so the um, alien, it's almost like a sort of alien virus starts to spread throughout London and everybody starts going crazy and there's a big rampage and people start attacking each other on the streets. And then Colonel Breen is drawn towards the craft, it's quite a cool scene, it starts um, glowing up red and becoming hot and Colonel Breen starts looking at it and you've got this classic hammer horror scene here where Colonel Breen starts burning up and turns into a corpse from the intense energy. Bernard Quatermass becomes infected with this as well but he's snapped out of it by uh, Dr Rooney and as it turns out not everybody, it, there are a small amount of people that are immune to this telekinesis. So you've then got this absolutely brilliant scene of a Martian that towers above the city and it almost and it's like a big red apparition almost looking like the devil that has turned up and it is down to Quatermass and Rooney to stop this and Dr Rooney having looked at the old sort of demon books earlier puts it together that the, the way that you can defeat the devil is by a rod of iron so Rooney climbs a tower crane which is next to this um, demon apparition and he swings it into the um, spectre and the crane burns into flames and he managed to defeat it so that is that is how they end this film it's um i think the the way he looks at it is that with this crane he manages to draw the apparition and discharge the energy and so then you got the film that ends with uh, bernard quatermass he um meets up with um, barbara and you can see a london that has just been torn into flames and everybody's wrecked everything but everybody's gone back to normal and um, they've managed to stop this alien attack on earth um, so there you go so really you've got 
you have got quite a mess as the hero of this movie, but it's really Rooney, Dr. Rooney, who is the guy that sorts everything out. So he is the protagonist in the end, and he, he dies a hero. But there you go, that's it. That is Quite a Mess in the Pit. That is a bite-sized version of Quite a Mess in the Pit. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's um I would recommend watching this film late at night, about eleven o'clock, if you can. Um get some get some beers and some crisps and that, and uh, it's a real sort of cozy horror movie. And if you do decide to check this film out and you enjoy it, there are other Quatermass movies, uh, which I've got to mention at the beginning of the show. There was um, some ones that come out in the 1950s, which are really good. Uh, there's Quatermass Experiment and Quatermass 2, which is um, probably my next favourite one next to this, uh, which stars Brian Donnelly as Quatermass. And you've also had a couple of TV shows uh, that come out in the 70s. I think it's 1979, you had John Mills play Quatermass. And of late, you've had Jason Fleming play Quatermass. I think that was back in 2005 or something like that. But I, I can't really comment on that. I haven't seen that one, so I don't know whether that's any good or not. But if someone asked me who could play Quatermass today if they did make a remake if they did make another movie I would say Kenneth Branagh um, if someone asked me I think he would, could possibly play a good Quatermass I think he's just got that sort of look about him as a sort of scientist so we'll have to wait and see we'll see if they do any more with this um, with this series and that's it guys um, hope you enjoyed the episode I will be back soon uh, the next film I'm going to be covering is Neil Marshall's Dog Soldiers um, from the early 2000s with uh, Sean Pertwee and Kevin McKidd so um, going to look forward to that covering a bit of a werewolf movie and as I always mentioned guys I am a proud men- member of Legion Podcast so please check out all the other shows on there you can find my show on iTunes and Stitcher. And I've also got a Facebook page, so join in, have some fun with that. Um, post some comments, post some movies on there, get involved. Let me know if there's any films you want me to cover. So, all right, guys, so stay safe out of yourself, enjoy yourself, and I will see you soon. Take care. enjoyed this show then make sure you check out the other great shows on the legion podcast network like cinema psyops cinema beef devour the podcast duncan and Bo come correct exploding heads horror movie podcast friday the 13th get slayed the hell Ming power hour hello this is the doom show hero hero ghost show kill the cast underwater kaiju from outer space jerry hates action legion after dark metal health obsessive cinema discourse Pick Six Movies, the podcast by The Cemetery, the podcast on Haunted Hill, the Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.